Hello True Believer, today we're going to go through how to do Scratch Activity number 6, Duck Hunt. So you'll find all the resources available for this um, particular game that you're going to build, which is a classic from the 90s, um, underneath our tutorial number 4, Boolean Logic Duck Hunt Resources. Okay, so if you click on that, you need to download the folder, which will look like this. And inside that you'll find all the different assets, so all the images and also all the sounds. Now, while you're doing your Criterion B, this is what you should start thinking about doing so that you don't have this mad rush at the end of trying to find all the different images that you need for your game. So, let's begin just so that you can see what the game looks like. If we go here and click Start, there's the game. simple game. So let's begin. So we'll go File New, let's save that, and here we go. So the first thing we need to do is get rid of Scratch. Uh, we then go up here to Backdrop, and you need to choose the original Duck Hunt. Now the original icon actually is black with all the different colors in. We're just going to do a simple one, and it's up to you to sort of be a bit more creative and add in different colors if you want. So we go over here, there's the title, and that's done. Now let's do the script for that. So when the green flag is checked, we switch the black backdrop to title, and then we broadcast a new message that a new game has occurred. Okay, then we go sounds. And we want to play a sound until done, so not just any sound. We want it to basically be done till it's play all the way through until it's done. And then instead of the pop sound, we need to open up the file that we had before. So under sounds, and we go to the title. Now we've got that. We go back to our scripts. So instead of pop, we swap that to title. And then that's the beginning of the game ready. We then need to add the insert coin. So we go um, open from file and we go sprites, insert coin, and we will put that in the right position there. And when this starts, when we click, we want the looks. So we want it to hide first, just so it sort of pops up properly. Um, we then want to wait one second then we want to show, and then we go control forever, and then we want to change the color by 25. Okay, so, so then also when we click on this, so when start, when this bright is clicked, we want the background to switch to the next um, backdrop. And then we want to hide the insert coins. Right, now we haven't got the next backdrop. So if we go to backdrop, open from file, there's our background. So let's just see what this looks like now. Open it, click on it, and then it loads the next the game. Fantastic. So now when we play the game, we actually want it to have um its own sort of music. So if we go over here, we go up to forever, click on that, and then we go if, and this is a cool part that you can actually do. We can use our backdrop name, and we just need to name it properly. So instead of backdrop, let's call it the game. And back to our scripts, operator equals. So if our backdrop name is the game, then want to play the new soundtrack so that will have it on a forever loop basically so we'll go open and we'll go back up to duck on sounds and gameplay so that will now play the gameplay which is kind of cool so once that's loaded just so you can hear what the gameplay should sound like Sound, but a little bit different. Okay. 
So instead of title, we swap there and we go gameplay. Awesome, so now our game should load with a different soundtrack. So the next step is we now need to upload the um, crosshair that's gonna be floating around on the screen. So we go to crosshair and there's the original file. Now to shrink that, we can just use the shrink button up here. But common mistake is people click off it. So if you press the shrink button and hold down the shift button, even if you fall off it, it won't remove the tool. So we're gonna shrink that all the way down, down, down. And then there's our crosshair. Now we're trying to make that as small as possible so that when it's over the top of the duck, it um, reacts appropriately. So if we go back to script and we go events, and then when I receive game over, we don't want the, the crosshair to be there anymore. So we're gonna have that hide. And then we wanna have when I receive new game We want to show and then we want to have a forever loop and we want the motion to go to the mouse pointer and then when backdrop switches the game go to control then forever then if mouse down Play until sound is done. We go sounds. And we want to use the gunshot. So we go here and open up the gunshot. And you should notice that it's got all this extra sound at the back here. So we actually want to get rid of that. So if we just select all this and go edit, delete, we will remove it. You can also do some other effects so you can make it louder, reverse it up to you. You can also record your own sounds in here as well if you want. Okay, so if we go back to the scripts, step pop, we want the gunshot. Now let's see what happens. Now make sure um, one of the mistakes that I've found some people have when they load this if they cross this, you're going to try and it, it won't load. Okay, so make sure you keep the crosshair quite small. Right, the next part we need to build is our duck. So we're going to open a new sprite. And we're going to go duck hunt, sprites. And we're going to use the sprite sheet. Okay, so then under costumes, there's all the different characters that are involved in this game. Now, we're not gonna do all of these. It's up to you what you wanna do. Um, we're just gonna focus on the animation of the duck flying around. So this, this, just these three here. Now, Scratch lets you do this quite easily. Okay, so we're gonna zoom in a bit. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new costume. Okay, now notice this little crosshair in the middle. So what we're going to do is go back, try and find the, the particular animation that we want, which is these three here. And we're just going to use the select tool, wrap around it, press control C, go to costume one, control V, line them up with the crosshair and click. If you then go again with the next one, select them, press control C, make a new costume, control V, paste and then the last one we select all that control c new costume control v click so what should happen now is we have our duck on the screen now if you see how he's got the different backgrounds as we swap through those so what we need to do is make sure we have the no fill so what we can use is the it's quite easy is the fill with color and we don't just want to do yellow or blue or something like that. So what we actually want to do is use um, the no fill tool. So if we come down here, it's the white line with the black, uh, red line, sorry, red line with the white background. And we come up here on the, the green. And on each of these, we just need to go through and fill in them. So now we've got our um, duck. So the next step then is we've got a script animating. So when he flies around on the screen and basically what happens here 
is we need to have um, a new thing when it receives the game. So the event, uh, when I receive new game, we want him to hide. And then we're gonna go when the backdrop um, switches to game. We want to broadcast flap. Okay, so we broadcast, and we're gonna make this new message, and we're gonna um, call it flap. Okay. So when I receive flap, okay, we want to set the size to 100%. We then want to show the bird. And then we want to have him forever flapping around. So we go forever. And then we go operators. Then an if else block. And basically we want to, if the bird is on top of the mouse, uh, sorry, the crosshair, and it's been clicked, we want it to not exist anymore. So one way of doing it is we can do the not. So if it's not, um, touching and clicking, so touching the mouse pointer and the mouse is down. We want this bird to be flying around the place, okay? So we want him to be moving, so we go to motion and we get him to move around a number, so 1 to 20. We then want him to turn again Pick a random number, 1 to 15. So now see how he's flying around. And then if he hits the edge of the screen, we want him to bounce off. And then the costume is the next costume. So now he should be flapping. Now see that it's got the original sprite one that we had. So if we just stop that up here and delete that, the bird should now fly around. So if we start Flapping around. Pretty cool. Right? right, then if we come back to the script, we need to do what happens when it gets shot. So we've got to have a play sound. And we're going to go, the duck's been shot. So we open the sounds that we had before from all the assets that we downloaded. Um, duck shot hit. Ah! Okay, and then we go back to our script. Let me change that to duck shot hit. We then change the size. And what we're going to do is basically blow him up so he looks like he's been hit and he gets bigger. And then we're going to wait. Put him at three. And then once he's, that's been done, then we hide him. And then we're going to have a variable for our score. So we're going to have our score. And that's going to change by one because we've made a hit. Okay. Then we want the bird to randomly move to a different location. So he's, he's hidden at the moment. Um, he's going to come back. So we're going to have him randomly um, move to another location. So he looks like a brand new bird. So negative 240 to 240. And then we'll put in that. 180 to negative 180, okay? And then this is why we had the broadcast message with the flap, so we're now gonna wait one second, and then we're gonna broadcast flap in here, okay? So what happens then is the game starts broadcast flap, but when I receive flap, now it's gonna keep going off like this, okay? Um, so that should now work. So if we look at the game, it's a coin. There we go, got him. So it's going to keep coming back. Awesome, so that's the duck now animated. Now if you want, um, let's, let's label this appropriately, we call it a duck. If you want to have multiple docs, this is how easy it is now in Scratch. Because you've made that object, you can just duplicate it. So we're just going to put six docs on. So now.
That's the game. The next part then is we need to um, get the, the timer and the score working. Um, so if we go back to the original stage, so when we swap to game, um, we'll go over here. When backdrop swaps to game, and we want to show the variables. So we want to show the variable score, and we want to show the variable um, timer. So we haven't done that yet, so we go make variable timer. Timer, and then we want to set the score. So we want to set the score and timer. So set the score to start and set the timer to, uh, let's say, 100 seconds. Now, this is where I got um, stuffed up last time. So I've actually worked out. It's not the repeat. We want to repeat until. Okay, and we want to repeat until the timer is equal to zero. So we go over here to timer. And we go equals, and we go data, and until the timer equals zero. So basically, that's going to keep going until the timer is equal to zero. We wait one second, and then we change the timer by negative one. Okay, so that should go down. Now, if we go back up to control, and we go if. And go score it's greater than 60 we win okay so score is greater than 60 you've won event um, broadcast your message you win and then we're going to switch the backdrop Which we haven't put in yet so we'll go back up here we'll delete this one because we don't need it um not that one it's from file so backdrops where are they? so there's the win uh, notice how it's not centered so we're going to go through and center that so come here use the selection tool let's move them across okay so there's you win um, we also need to put the you lose version, so the backdrops and the game over. Okay, so those are the two different types that we'll have. So if we go back here to scripts, you win, we'll swap the backdrop to you win. And then we'll hide the variables. So we'll hide the, the timer and the score. Okay. Hang on, sorry, that needs to be an if else. So if we go back here, if else, because there's only going to be one option, you either win or you lose. So if you win, you get that. And we'll duplicate that. Else, um, you lose. Of the message there, so game over, and then because we're good programmers, we also want to stop this script so that doesn't happen forever and ever, right? Now, just for convenience sake, let's just slow this down. So, let's say if we get 10 and we'll make the time instead of 100, we'll drop that down to um, 20 seconds. Surely, I'll be able to get let's actually we'll make it five because I'm not that good with the shooting. I lost. Okay. Now, if I had one, I would have gotten the five. Um, point. So obviously I suck at this game. <laughs> um, anyway, so that's basically what you need to do to build this game. Um, there's a whole heap of different resources on top of this. So inside here you can add different music if you want for the game over sequence. Um, 
and it's up to you. So you can now extend this. So instead of just having the one duck on that sprite sheet, you can put the extra ducks. You could have the dog running around on the ground. Uh, you might want to have a live hut, hut up. It's totally up to you how you handle this from here. Okay. Happy programming. Enjoy.